Guard. Come on up. Everyone should be familiar with Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve. It's an all-volunteer program, and I want to take the opportunity just to talk to you guys, because everyone knows if you're a soldier, airman, soldier, or a sailor, or whatever else, if you want to deploy or you want to serve in the military, you need your family and you need your employer support. One of the things the active duty guys a lot of times don't think about is the employer support because the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, or whatever is their employer. Well, we know our Guard Reserve, and there's seven services for those out there. There's two National Guards, the Army and Air, and then all five of the services, including the Coast Guard, have a reserve force. And every one of those, the vast majority, like we talked earlier, are the nine to five individuals out there in our community. And every time they have to show up for drill, and now we're up to, like someone was joking earlier, between Muta 17s, uh, you know, so it's not the, the guard of our youth where it was uh, two eight hour days or it was two 10 hour days. Now uh, you can come in on a Muta 6 and get over 40 hours in on a, on a drill week, and especially if you come to Camp Ripley. So the, the, it's kind of changed in all the requirements and the new equipment coming in. And, and so these individuals need our support more now than ever. And so the employer support of the Guard and Reserve is a group of volunteers. You don't get paid for anything. You do get mileage. You get a fancy shirt like Ron has, and this is Ron Lindgren over here. Uh, once again, I should introduce myself, Chad Sackett. I am the uh, Region 4 Chair, which is Central Minnesota here, kind of Brainerd to St. Cloud and over. And so we do a number of different things. We have individuals that do military outreach, and that's what Ron and I do. So we go to units and we give a briefing. Most of you sat through those briefings throughout your career. When the SGR gets up, it gives you about a 15 to 30 minute briefing on your rights and responsibilities as a guardman and what the rights and responsibilities of your employer are. And so uh, that's the main one we're looking at. But there's also, uh, we have individuals that go out and meet with employers and they do briefings at trade shows and stuff to make sure employers know what your rights and responsibilities are and what their rights and responsibilities are under USERA. And, and then the last one is when we have HR professionals or lawyers, by and large, they become, and there's some others that do it, they become the ombudsman. And those are the true <coughs> subject matter experts when you come up with the soldier deployed, they came back, how does their 401k, if there's an issue there, how does the bonus, should they have gotten the bonus, their counterparts got a bonus, they didn't get it, are they eligible? And that's where you really need to understand the law, you need to understand you know, all the different things there, and that's why the ombudsmen are those subject matter experts. So the rest of us are really getting out there and explaining the rights and responsibilities and answering the, the basic level questions. So what we're coming to you for, this being a retiree breakfast, is asking for you to consider becoming a volunteer. And I know a lot of people go, well, I snowbird, or I saw, and I do this, or I do that. It's really participate to the level you want. Uh, same thing back here. We have some, some brochures back on the table. Ron's been sitting back over here in the corner. It's got the nice QR code. It'll take you right to the ESGR site to explain what volunteers do. But once you sign up, it's really just a couple hours of training, you know, so you understand the employer support of the Guard Reserve. And then you usually get assigned to some units, or you can pick up some briefings. So like this last weekend, I'm also a scout leader. So I went out on a camp out Sunday morning. I got up at old dark 30. It was kind of like the army, get up, rip everything down in the dark, throw in the truck, drive back, take a shower, come to Camp Ripley, get a couple briefings. And it's that opportunity to explain, to, like I said, soldiers or men or whoever, uh, what their rights and responsibilities are, answer some questions, get a point in the right direction. The other part of that is the ability to award uh, employers. So there's Patriot Awards and there's a couple of seven awards, but for soldiers or for service people, their entry level is the uh, Patriot Award. So the other part of our job is I'll get notified that there's a Patriot Award in Central Minnesota, and either I or another volunteer will go to that employer. Uh, I had one down in Cold Spring, so I drove down to Cold Spring, met with the soldier and their employer, present them, you know, to reward them for going above and beyond. Because everyone has to meet the law, not everyone does, but normally that's where we can step in and help. Uh, but we definitely want to recognize and go above and beyond. When you start saying, like I said, hey, I snowbird, I volunteer for other organizations, I've told people and I continue to tell people, if you look at some of the literature that comes from the national level, they're saying 8 to 10 hours a month. Well, I probably put in 8 to 10 hours a month, and Tom probably puts in 8 to 10 hours a month, but the average volunteer puts in more than 8 to 10 hours a year. 
So it's really participate to the level you want. Because if you only get assigned to two units or three units, I consider each, and Ron, you can correct me if you have something better, but I always tell people about two hours. Because you've got to do one or two emails and a couple phone calls to get it set up. I usually show up my drive time. I show up a little early in case somebody has questions, in case I can go early. I give my 15, 20 minute presentation and I hang around for another 15 minutes if anyone wants to get me in my drive home. But it's a chance to stay involved with the military. It's a chance to talk to young soldiers and airmen. It's a chance to be involved. And so what I would say is if you're interested at all, come see us back there. Both Ron and my cards are laying out there. We have some brochures. We can answer questions. But like I said, it's not a, hey, I've got to do 500 hours. You know, this year I've got to do 10 hours a week or anything. It's more you can do what you can do or what you want to do, and we'll work with you to make that happen. And I think you'll find when you go out and you give like a Patriot Award to employers, it's a very rewarding experience and that chance to talk to the employer about the military and thank them for their support. And the same thing's true of uh, those soldiers going and talking to them when you find out they're having problems, when you find out their employer's not treating them right, or like I said, if they are treating them right, help them put their employer into them. So, like I said, are there any questions? Do you do boss lift? We do boss lifts also. So Bob Boone's the actually the guy that uh, oversees that right now, and so the units work with the SGR to do a boss lift where we bring employers to Camp Ripley during annual training or on drill weekends. Uh, the Air Guard's done a couple recently where they fly people up in a C-130 uh, or take them out. So it's a great opportunity to show employers what their soldiers and airmen and stuff are doing on those on those drill weekends at ET. So it helps them better understand the commitment that they've made. Other questions? All right, like I said, we'll be sitting back here in the corner. If you have any, if you want to come up, grab my card, grab Ron's card. You can hit us up later. Take your phone, hit the QR code if you want more information. Grab one of these brochures. But I think you'll find if you're at all interested, you know, like I said, it's not as big of a time commitment as you think. It's a great chance to stay involved. I don't want to turn it over to Ron here to uh, talk about that. I'm Captain Brown Lindgren, I'm retired. Uh, we talk about ID cards. Everybody probably in this room has one. There's some benefits to that ID card that are the best kept secret in the military. They're called r and r centers. In the past 25 years, I've been going to the Halley Co-op on Waikiki in Hawaii. You pay by your rank and your view. Absolutely fabulous. Most people don't know there's 11 R&R &R centers just in the Hawaiian Islands. They have a book over here at the exchange called Military Living. It'll show you where they are worldwide. We have a disabled uh, veterans outreach area in Ely, Minnesota. It is one quarter mile from the north end of Highway 169. Two former members of the military and their families donated their resorts so that disabled veterans can have a place to go reconnect with the outdoors. I would also like to recognize Tony 1981, my first unit administrator as a commissioned officer. You're just as good now as you were back then. Chris, I'd like to recognize as the new VSO from Morrison. Thank you. And it was a pleasure meeting you in 2000 on the Norway trip. Also, I'd like to recognize the fact that Chad is now the vice chairman for the state of Minnesota for ESGR. That's just happened in the last couple of weeks. And congratulations. And it's an honor to serve with you. Also, for you Legion members, welcome from Bedette, Minnesota. That's my home Legion post. I was born in that area and decided that's where I would be a Legion member. My card, which is available back on the table, and also Chad's card. 
We've got a handout that's got a QR code on it. Makes it easy to be a volunteer. And like he says, I probably do a lot more hours than most people because I'm the vice chair for Region 1, which is basically from South of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, all the way up to the Canadian border. Lois Robinson, who is our executive director of the region, would like to say welcome to any new volunteers. It's an honor and a pleasure to give back to the military. That little bit of not being able to have that still military connection, you get it from being an ESGR volunteer. There's nothing more special than an E2 private that wants to recognize his employer because he just came back from a deployment and there were fellow employees that came and shoveled his driveway while his wife was snowed in. Those are the kind of things that people do in your local areas. The Legion Club, the VFW Club, it's so easy. I make a phone call in Fergus Falls, where I live, and say, Chad's deployed and his wife is snowed in. I can't drive there fast enough because when I get there, there's somebody already there with a snowblower blowing the driveway out for them. That's the kind of specialty that you have with fall fellow former military members. That R and R Center. I've been doing it for 25 years. And when I say it's the best kept secret, I mean it's the best kept secret. You just don't know how valuable an asset that is to you. Please take an opportunity <coughs> to enjoy those. Uh, I've been going 25 years to Hawaii. My spouse who served just as well as I did, especially during the command time that I had, where she answered phone calls and gave the information that was necessary for troop members. That spouse deserves that little extra special place to go to. And it's a way of saying thank you. I can rent a room for my spouse and I at the Hallie and up to four additional rooms. You can have weddings there, you can have all kinds of things there. It's 764 rooms, two pools, two hot tubs, and three restaurants. And they treat you like a king. Or a queen. I, I apologize, Chris. <laughs> I'm from that old male dominated way back when no money better. <laughs> and thanks again, Tony. I appreciate the fact that as a unit administrator, you taught me to be an officer. And I'll always remember that. And say hi to your brother. Are those new? Can we 
take mob post? You can take mob post, yes. Tell us more. Those are exciting. Nice castle, so you get a $200 deposit, and after the $200 deposit, the $50 reservation fee. And that reservation fee would go to your first night. You could have up to four nights. So it's quite the time you have with that. And it's four uh, bunks in there. All year long? You could do that all year long, yes. You could do camping in as well. You could go ice fishing. You could take it on the lakes here at uh, Camp Berkeley. But I think you have to talk to ranch control for them to pull it off. Who qualifies the rent from it? What do you need to do to qualify as far as being you know, just a veteran? Oh, you need to be a state, federal, law enforcement, or <coughs> you could just be a guard member. Or retiree? Retiree, yes. Okay, just check. Yep. What about general veterans that are not uh, retirees? You can have uh, current veterans as well. Okay. Do you have any bouncy houses for the grandkids? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> for grandkids, you can rent like a. We have like a flat screen TV game kit with Xbox controllers and stuff. There you go. Get bikes, helmets, locks. So that'll be some of the things you can do here. Do you have canoes and kayaks or anything? We have canoes and kayaks, yes. Off post along? Uh, up to 50 miles. Okay. And then uh, we actually have a disc golf course here if anybody's into uh, disc golf. We have disc golf sets that you can rent. And then we have golf clubs too, if you would like to use some of those. If I'm having a party, can I get some ice? You can get ice. How do I do that? Just walk up in there and we have plenty of ice machines. We can just take it forward. Free? It's free of charge. I love it. And then, uh, that's so all we have. All right, question? Six or seven point buck, 
and he actually pulled it out of the woods in that track chair. And because it was such an adventure for him and us, we mounted that head also for him. We have, I've been playing video all morning up there of all our, our uh, events. Um, at this point in time, we have 13 board members, and we're kind of fussing who we ask to be on the board because we want that person to be able to do something for us. I have to be the secretary, that's why I got on. My husband's a volunteer because I told him so. <laughs> And our, our board members in, include a variety of uh, community people because they are um, landowners, uh, the guides for duck hunting, moose hunting, and uh, that, that category. We are sad to say we didn't have a goose hunt this year because up north the harvest was so late, all the fields that we needed to use were still being found by them. Uh, and the ducks weren't flying. You know, of course, now they're coming down when we didn't have it. We had a deer hunt last weekend. We had nine hunters and we got nine uh, nine animals. And what they and they shoot it, we cut it, we gut it, and we uh, wrap it up to the, to take it home. Everybody went home with a cooler full of meat. Um, and the same with fishing. Everybody goes home with their rear limit. Just ask that. Um, and we've had people from all over the state. Albert Lee on a one year, Ed and, and three other ladies, or four other ladies from this area. I think three of them actually work on the base. They were all up there. So on my desk, at my table there, there is applications. I put everything in the envelope so you're not going to lose it. There's applications, history, uh, folders, as whether it's duck hunting, deer hunting. All you have to do is apply chosen, you get up there, and we do the rest. We take you from point to point, and we have you uh, enjoy your good time, and, and there's so many stories, so many stories that we hear. And, and you guys are just uh, mean the world to everybody. Thank you so much for your service. What? Do I have to be a disabled veteran? Can I be any veteran? Can I be a you can be any veteran or active. We try to get the hunters out, the, the servicemen out there that don't have the opportunity okay. to go. We, uh, I'm in the American Legion Riders also, and we have a gentleman there who has stage four kidney cancer, and he applied for the fishing hunting trip, and he says, I don't even care if I shoot, he said, I just want to go visit, because he never gets to visit, camaraderie means so much. And the sad thing is, he ended up in the emergency room, so he missed the hunt. Did you bring the hunt to him? No, he didn't. <laughs> and is your son a soldier? Yes, uh, my husband is a Vietnam vet, and my son Trevor works on the base here. He's, I think, going on 21 years. I think he's in Canada or something. I never know what he was <laughs> He doesn't tell me because when he was deployed in Iraq, he came back. I said, You're done now, right? Yeah, Mom, I'm done. And every time I give him something more, I can enroll for another three years, another four years. Thank you. Okay, well, Chris has a beautiful flyer at the Falls Ballroom. It's going to be on November 10th. It is for our World War II Korean War vets and our Vietnam veterans. They're going to have a nice meal, a little gathering there. So, if you fall into those eras or know someone that does, this would be wonderful. For 20 bucks. We can go there for 20 bucks too. Well, there we go. So that is really nice. They have awesome food there. What's that? RSVP. Oh, you do need to RSVP. And they've got a phone number on here, so just go over and see Chris afterwards if you're interested and you can get the information of how to RSVP. And the owners are veterans, both of them. They are. Husband and wife team, they're both veterans. And they have like six or seven children, too. They're amazing people. I think they have more than that. Maybe more, yeah. It's a lot. I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. That was yesterday. Talk about energy. That's a lot. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who came here as either a vendor who provided information, individuals who did make donations, or volunteered to help in some way, form, shape, man, whatever it is. But thank you so much. It means a lot to all of us because we're all retirees in this information and just the camaraderie of getting together 
is amazing. So that is wonderful. Um, and then we're going to be doing, we're going to have Chris come up. We have something that we're going to do that's very special. And Tony will come up. <laughs> it's giveaway time. So we like giving away stuff. So who thinks I should give something to Tony? Besides that, I love it. Secrets, don't tell too many right in here. I wouldn't say so much. But anyway, TRICARE is the best. Uh, there's a rule with TRICARE is if a veteran passes away, his false three marries, her TRICARE insurance ceases. Um, I want to thank you all for attending this retired seminar and reunion of working friends. You are all a great part of this military generation. You served this country of ours with pride honor and dignity. Please keep our veteran men and women in your prayers, especially those serving in hostile lands, defending our freedom. Uh, before we go this morning, there will not be a closing formation, uh, but we have a few door prizes uh, that we're going to be giving out right now. We got a lot of fellows, uh, uh, my fellow, my Lundell, Shasta, Minnesota. He sends a lot of he sends boatloads to uh, uh, veterans in hostile nations. Bjornberg, Carol Bjornberg was the first one to RSVP when I said save the day. So she gets a pizza. Thanks, young lady. <laughs> Start picking names. You want to pick another name? Kelly Black. I'll take this side of the room. We're in the back. Just stand up when you get your when you're. Larry Fisa. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, first thing I want to do is I'd like to give Tony and uh, Chris and the staff that put on a wonderful breakfast a big round of applause. I've been doing this uh, for a few uh, breakfasts now, and I'm not sure why. Maybe Chris can explain it to me, but why do I always get to draw at the end of this deal? <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, but maybe I try to keep things nice and short. So I'm going to start with a little story. Uh, I had a wait, uh, and, and uh, three people were looking over the clergy come up and says, well, when you pass, what would you like uh, those uh, people coming to your service, what would you like them to say about you? And the first guy thinks about it, he says, well, I hope they say that I was a kind, generous, loving soul uh, that cared for everybody around me and, and was happy to see me. The second guy thinks about it and he says, well, I hope, I hope they say that I was a, a good father, a good husband, um, a good 
good neighbor and a good friend. The third guy thinks about it and he goes, I think what I want him to say is, look, it's moving. <laughs> Kind of, kind of brings things around where, you know, don't don't wait till the last minute to do what you really want to do. Get out there and do it. Yesterday is, is gone. Don't worry about yesterday. Learn from that for what you do today and live for uh, tomorrow. Um, so, uh, as a DAB, I'm the, I'm the new, uh, commander for the Chapter 12 here in Morrison County. Um, I have this uh, little... This uh, limited number print here that uh, I'm giving away uh, from uh, uh, my co uh, personal uh, collection of stuff. It's a uh, it's number 298 of 500. Uh, Stuart Nelson, the Golden Hen. Nice, beautiful crappie. I, I love fishing crappie, so um, I'll be giving that away. And um, the winner is. Gerald Majuris. Chris is kind of wants me to talk about. Uh, I'm looking at the DAB, and hopefully uh, through the foundation, um, we're going to help uh, be the main supporter for this breakfast in the years coming along. Um, and that'll be an honor. Our, DA, our, our chapter, our department president, our commander was going to try to be here today, but I did, he didn't make it. Um, so, uh, when, one thing I want, do want to talk about the DAB real quick is you, all these other service organizations came up here, talked about volunteerism. What the DAB does through uh, LVAP, L -V -A -P, you can go on to the DAB uh, Minnesota website, go in there, and when you do these volunteer hours, you can enter them, if you're a DAB member, into those LVAP hours, and when it comes to appropriations through the state and through the federal government, these hours save taxpayers millions of dollars. And so when we want to get funded for some of these programs, that's how we do it. We do it at when we come together, the legions, the VFWs, the DAB, the Paralyzed Veterans of America, the Vietnam Veterans of America. When we come together, stuff gets done. That omnibus bill, the first one ever, ever in the state of Minnesota was done when we were at our DAB convention earlier this spring, there's a, uh, a website, it's called uh, Min, uh, Minfluence. You can go on to there and enroll, and you'll get a, a, a quick uh, email about, and you, all you, and you go in, you hit where you, your uh, zip code, it'll tell you who your senator is, who your representative is, and it'll go through what, you know, S number or whatever it is, you read through it, if you support it, you hit put in your uh, zip code and hit submit, that'll go right to your uh, to those people uh, when they're deciding on what needs to be done. And the number one thing right now is we need, we have to, this this coming session again is to get another <laughs> veterans only omnibus bill passed. Go to Men Illusion on the DA, Minnesota DAV.org site and sign up for that. Because that day when we did that, St. Paul got flooded with over a thousand emails stating we want you to pass this omnibus bill. And if you're if you're those people coming to you and asking you for your support, ask them number one, will you support? Uh, veterans on this bill in this session. Plain and simple. You're either for us or you're against us. Nothing else matters. Thank you. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Mike Evans, the USA guy, and Tony's going to uh, draw a card here. I'm going to shake it up a little bit for, for the $100 gift card. If you didn't get a chance to uh, enter the drawing, it's too late.
on a Monday. Pick three of them. Who's that? I don't know. It's almost fictitious. Bob Jones. <laughs> you went in the bathroom. Okay, he's, he's a winner. Are, are you related to him? Well, I'm going to give this to you and you can decide whether you want to give it to him or not. <laughs>